Welcome to Tsuji This Week. I'm Anita Lee. It's good to have you with us. Coming up, Tsuji's 8th Disaster Relief and Medical Team arrived in Nepal to continue the work of their predecessors. Tsuji volunteers in Myanmar offer English lessons to impoverished students in Bago City. In the Philippines, Tsuji volunteers kick off rice distributions in Quezon City. Tsuji's love for Nepal continues as the 8th Disaster Relief and Medical Team has now arrived in Nepal. Although current conditions are still not ideal, medical personnel are doing their best to provide local residents with all the help they need. This is the tense community in Maswari. It actually used to be a soccer field, but after the earthquake, the government gave NGOs the permission to set up tents here for displaced residents. Beneath our feet, the ground is a dirt field, which, when the wind blows, sends dust everywhere. It's under such difficult conditions that City's Free Clinic opens its doors for the day. The first patient of the day suffers from a head wound. A brick fell from above and hit my head while I was working. With the wound being 3.5 centimeters long and 0.5 centimeters deep, there is little the free clinic could do except to clean and dress the wound. However, Dr. Chen concludes that it might not be enough. This wound is deep. I'm afraid it might have fractured his skull. We can't sew him up here, so I think it would be best to send him to a hospital. Knowing that local residents often delay seeking treatment for their injuries due to high medical fees, Tsuji's disaster relief and medical team accompanied the patient to the hospital and paid for his treatment. Meanwhile, the 70-some-year-old senior is experiencing acupuncture and cupping for the first time. Her back was hurting. Actually, it can be treated with acupuncture as well, but I'm using cupping as a way to relieve her lower back pain. After the earthquake, the senior was forced to sleep on the floor, which has caused aches and pains. Such cases are not uncommon in the recent-free clinics. It's all muscle soreness. It's most likely because they frequently lift heavy items. Here at City's Free Clinic Station, the doctors are more like family, taking care of the local residents' health in the aftermath of the earthquake, while also thinking about what's best for the patients in the weeks to come. At the Maheswari Tent community in Nepal, City volunteers came across a boy who lost his shoes in the disaster and promised to purchase a new pair of shoes on his behalf. But first we go to Shiva Temple, where team members distributed aid vouchers to quake survivors prior to the relief distribution which will take place over the weekend. <laughs> At the Shiva Temple, members of Tsuji's Disaster Relief and Medical Team are handing out aid vouchers to quake survivors. Through the assistance of local residents who act as translators, the distribution was carried out without a hitch. <laughs> the senior dressed up for the occasion with flowers on her head as a decoration. Team members also seized the chance to care for those waiting for their turn to receive their vouchers. With city volunteers by her side, this woman suddenly breaks into tears. <laughs> Upon learning that this woman's husband passed away in a tremor, city volunteers quickly offered their blessings and a peace charm. This meaning peaceful. Peaceful. Apple. Apple is means peaceful. We wish you always peaceful. Okay. Be happy. Okay. Love's dear girl. Okay. <laughs> Team members hope their words of encouragement can bring happiness to quick survivors and help them put their sorrows behind them. This is 14-year-old Roman Gingju who walks around the Mansori Ten community in bare feet wear other slippers because he doesn't have shoes to wear. Uh, shoes, no. No shoes. No shoes. No shoes. No shoes. says all his shoes, including his school shoes, are buried underneath the rubble. He goes to a public school because it is cheaper. He told us that he doesn't have shoes, pants or a school uniform. We have made a note of all his needs. 
Team of Dr. Chen Jianhong from Malaysia also makes it a point to visit quick survivors in their tents. Yeah. Oh, the baby is coughing. Yeah. Already taking the medicine every day? Dr. Chen discovered that the seven month old baby suffers from a cough and very dirty nails. The baby's nails are covered with dirt because they're too long. Children love putting their fingers into their mouth, so they get sick very easily. At the end of her visit, Dr. Chen shares some hygiene tips so that the quake survivors and their families can stay healthy in the days to come. Team members in Australia recently held their third dental free clinic in Melbourne, serving 29 patients, while team of volunteers in the Philippines held a free clinic at the Islam Religion Center in Manila. By bringing medical care, team of volunteers have shown that compassion transcends social disparities and religious differences. In a makeshift operation room, Tima doctors conduct surgery with full concentration. We're glad to have this opportunity to be here for them, while some Muslim residents say that it is hard for outsiders to enter this Islamic village. We were given the opportunity to help our Muslim brothers and sisters. Religious differences do not stop city volunteers from reaching out to these Muslim families in need of medical assistance. I came today because of my vision problems. I've suffered from a cerebral hemorrhage that leads to a stroke, and my stomach does not digest well, so I'm very thin. Providing dental, ophthalmology, general medicine, and optometry care, Tima members in the Philippines have shown that compassion transcends religious differences. Turning to Melbourne, Tima members there held their third free dental clinic in a community health care center, where a senior named Eon had 12 of his teeth extracted. Everyone showed me very nice. No, not, no, no hassle with anything. Everyone's been very kind. That's all I can say because everything's really good. To safeguard the oral health of refugees and poor families, Tsuji volunteers in Melbourne work together with a local health care centre. I've been uh, imp very impressed with the, uh, the approach that the, uh, that the organisation takes uh, working with our clients here and, and the community. Some of the patients became nervous before seeing the dentist, but volunteers eased their anxious hearts. And then I've not seen a dentist for a long while, but when I came today, at least, <laughs> it was so good, it was so good, I can't say more, it's so good. At the end of the clinic, the volunteers are ready to deliver more quality medical care to others in Australia. Thank you, Suji! Last August, rain and floods devastated Main Mars Bargo District. Following Tsuji's relief to the area, volunteers found their children they lacked interest in learning English. A group of volunteers from Yangon thus decided to visit once a month to teach the children English. Today, Liu Yan Yan and other volunteers from Yangon have traveled to Myanmar's Mars countryside to teach English to students in this remote village. We can spark the children's interest in the subject and at the same time, the students can learn something and won't feel bored. <laughs> Upon Tsuji's relief distribution for flood survivors in Bagro district, volunteers found that local students were behind in their English competency. To help, volunteers in Yangon formed a teaching team and now pay monthly visits. The children here don't have much to do on weekends. When your volunteers take the time out from your busy schedule to come here to tutor the students, I'm more than happy to provide a place for the children to learn. Our village is in a remote area. Parents don't encourage their children to study. We are very grateful for your tutoring. It will help these students become more knowledgeable. To further spark the students' interest in English, volunteers break into smaller groups, and drawings and games are used to reinforce the lessons. The students here don't have a good English foundation and also lack interest in learning the language. Through storytelling, we hope to stimulate their learning abilities. 
These teachers are very energetic and have lots of heart. I'm here to observe their teaching methods and hopefully I can incorporate their methods into my lessons later on. Despite the classroom being without chairs or desks, the students still enjoy themselves and these lessons will help students break the cycle of poverty and move towards a brighter future. Once again, love from Taiwan in the form of rice has found its way into the hands of impoverished residents in Quezon City, the Philippines. Some recipients of city's rice in turn shed some of their rice to help neighbors who are victims of a recent fire. City volunteers in the Philippines organized a rice distribution for 661 impoverished families of Quezon City. As soon as Marilou received her 20 kilo bag of rice, she immediately rushed home and packed a sack of rice and scooped some out for her friend. Her neighbor, Faye Orela, also brought over a bag of rice. They are in a very unfortunate situation, so we should help them. The rice has been given to us by Tsiji, so we should share this blessing with our neighbors. As it turns out, Mary Lou's friend Sharon and her family were the victims of a recent fire and are still currently residing in a temporary shelter. Even though she doesn't have much to give herself, she still thinks about helping us. Thank you, Mary Lou. <laughs> Despite her own poverty, Marilu is still able to find room in her heart to care for her friend in need. When I had nothing, they were always here to support me. Now that they are going through a difficult time after a fire tragedy, I can feel their burden and it pains me that I'm not able to do anything for them. Now that I have this, I hope I can help them in some way. The rice brought over by Adelaida was a saving grace for Mildred and her family. When we escaped from the fire, we didn't take anything with us, so we willingly accept whatever kind of assistance that's been extended to us. I shared some of my rice with them, even if it's just a little, to help. In addition to sharing a portion of her rice, Adelaida also offered her home for Mildred and her family to stay until they get back on their feet. Extending help to neighbors in need despite their own circumstances, these residents have shown that everyone is capable of great acts of kindness. The City Philippines chapter held yet another rice distribution at the Jingzi Hall in Quezon City, where 1,434 bags of rice, each weighing 20 kilograms, were distributed to impoverished families. Residents watch a video clip and recall the Buddha Day ceremony held in May. They watch intently as they are reminded of the solemnity and grace of the event. The Tsiji Philippines chapter has been caring for impoverished residents both emotionally and physically. Today, Tsiji will be distributing 1,434 bags of 20 kilo rice to families in need. For Noreen King King, the sole breadwinner of her family, this rice came just in time. This aid is a great help to us, as I have set aside money for my three children's tuition along with my husband's medical expenses. For the past seven years, Julia Corral has been the sole family provider. Although she sells daily commodities to support her family, raising six children hasn't been easy. Being a single mother is very hard, but I have to be strong for my children. When her husband passed away due to heart disease four years ago, 52-year-old Nina Gatto fell into financial hardship. Despite her own circumstances, she still found room in her heart to help others in need. This will be my first taste of Taiwanese rice. I am happy to collect recyclables on behalf of the volunteers. I do this because I want to help others. Although their lives may not necessarily improve overnight, their willingness to help others and positive outlook on life makes them spiritually wealthy. On May 31st, City Volunteers in Australia held their second hot meal distribution of the year in Ipswich and also took the opportunity to organize a simple Buddha Day ceremony. Although busy with official duties, Mayor Paul Pasali paid residents and volunteers a surprise visit. For Australians, chanting the incense praise is strange and unfamiliar. 
However, residents still willingly join hands in prayer and experience the serenity and grace of Siji's Buddha Day event. Ipswich Mayor Paul Pizzazale took time out of his busy schedule and made a surprise appearance at this most recent hot meal distribution. The mayor rolled up his sleeves and served his residents while also offering his best wishes. Volunteer Roy David Cocken also experienced the joys of serving others. I come here to help because these people help me and I believe I should return their kindness and help them. Touched by the kindness of Tsiji volunteers, Residents of Ipswich were inspired to pay this love forward and donate to help victims of the Nepal earthquake. City volunteers in Taiwan's new Taipei city paid a visit to Young Ai Senior Citizens' Home in Wanli District, bringing song and music which brought smiles to faces. And as June 20th is Dragon Boat Festival, city volunteers in Taipei's Nangang District pulled their efforts to make 1,100 sticky rice dumplings for solitary seniors. A group of volunteers work together to scrub and wash bamboo leaves. Each time this year, they come together to put their love into action, as they have been doing so for the past 10 years. As Dragon Boat Festival approaches, city volunteers of Taipei's Nangang District called on members of the community to help wrap sticky rice dumplings. Having prepared more than 10 types of ingredients, volunteers put their heart into the cooking. If moisture gets inside as you're wrapping the rice dumpling, it will end up soft and soggy, and not many people like it if it's too soft. If it's firmly wrapped, when you open up the rice dumpling, the rice will be chewy and more tasty. A foreign spouse from Vietnam, Du Shimei, once worked in a sticky rice dumpling shop. Hence, she works quickly and efficiently. When she heard that the volunteers needed assistance making rice dumplings for care recipients, she volunteered to help out. Fresh out the steamer, volunteers quickly pack and deliver the rice dumplings to the homes of solitary seniors. Financially, they're not that well off, and life is difficult for them. So we made these sticky rice dumplings for them, to experience the festive atmosphere and also to show them that we care about them. The some 1,000 rice dumplings not only contain the boundless love of volunteers, but the kind gestures have also brought an entire community closer together. <laughs> Taking to the stage, this grandma picks up a microphone and sings her heart out. City volunteers are regular visitors at the Young An Senior Citizens Home in Wanli, New Taipei City. And today they are joined by volunteers in training. Seeing that so many people have come to visit, 70-year-old grandma Yo couldn't hold back her tears. First, her son passed away. Then five months later, her husband died. So she was brought to Renai Singh near a citizen's home. When she saw that so many of us came to visit her today, she was extremely moved. Tai Wu Huijin and her two daughters-in-law have also signed up for volunteer training. Now with Tsiji in their lives, they have found more to talk about. When we attend these activities together, we have something in common to talk about, and we're also getting to spend some more time together. We look out for each other as well. Now that I'm married, I feel like I have another mother that cares for me and loves me. Seizing the opportunity to serve the elderly, city volunteer Gao Defang invited members of his ocarina class to join the visit. My classmates at the community college are very impressed with the work that we do, and they thoroughly enjoyed themselves today. All of them said they were happy to be a part of today's event. Apart from loving ourselves, we should extend this love to others. If we can embrace others with love, I believe society will be more harmonious and this force of goodness will be stronger. The city volunteers' visit has brought warmth to the Ren Ai Senior Citizen's Home. Although their visit was brief, seeing the smiles on the seniors' faces, volunteers all agree that their visit was worthwhile. 
In Taiwan, volunteers in Xinjiang County helped the care recipient, Mr. Huang, clean up his cluttered home. But first, we go to Taoyuan to see how local volunteers fixed the dilapidated home on behalf of care recipient, Ms. Qin, and her family. With paint peeling off the walls and signs of serious water leakage everywhere, it is hard to imagine that a family of six lives in this house. The ceiling is covered with mold. The damage is really serious. The homeowner says that she has trouble sleeping because she is afraid that rainwater will leak into the house. Whenever it rains, she has to use a bucket to catch rainwater. <laughs> This house is in bad shape. The homeowner and her family might be in danger if we don't fix the house as soon as possible. Without much repair over the years, this 34-year-old house is barely livable. Thankfully, Tzu volunteers have formed a team to fix the problem. The top floor of this house was an add-on. The second floor is in bad shape with steel bars sticking out from the concrete walls. We will fix these problems and add two more rooms on the first floor. After the reconstruction is complete, volunteers along with care recipient Ching and her family gave the home a thorough cleaning. To pay the love forward, the family kindly donates their love. Mrs. Chin and her family members have transformed from receivers to givers. The money they donate is filled with their blessings. I am thankful to the Tsuji brothers and sisters for cleaning up my home. Now I can live in a clean and tidy environment. With the assistance of Tzuji volunteers, Mrs. Ching and her loved ones can finally put their hearts at ease because they know their house is sturdy enough to shelter them against the elements. Tzuji volunteers were also in Jianshi Township, Xinzhou County, to help care recipient Huang clean up his cluttered home. The mother of this household ran away, so the father has to take care of his two children on his own. However, he also has to make ends meet, so he doesn't have the time to do household chores. The cleanup effort was joined by care recipient Liu, who volunteered his time and strength as a way to reciprocate for Tzu's assistance over the past decade. Before, I thought about taking my own life. Thankfully, the Tzuji sisters provided me with care and assistance. Tzuji sisters are always here to care for my family and me. Their gestures inspired me to change my life for the better. After nine hours of hard work, the Huang family home is finally clean and tidy once again. At the end of their visit, Tzu Qing's present fruit to Mr. Huang to express their well wishes. In Malaysia, rehearsals for the upcoming Water Repentance Sutra musical is in full swing. The performance will include the participation of Malaysian actors, hence a team made up of members of Tzu Performance Association especially travel to Malaysia to offer their guidance. We leave you with these images. Thank you for tuning in. Goodbye.